Laravel makes auth incredibly easy. I'm not just talking about that auth, authentication. I'm actually talking about this auth, authorization. Now, what is authorization and how does it differ from authentication? Well, let me give you a quick example. You're looking to get into a music concert or a festival or just to see your favorite band and you have to buy tickets in order to get into that concert. Well, when the person at the door kind of checks your ticket, it says, yeah, this is actually really good. You're allowed to come in. Well, that's authentication. You have a ticket. You're able to get into the place that you bought that ticket for. In this case, see your favorite artist. Usually when you buy tickets to a music festival or to see your favorite artist, it's not just all access tickets for every single ticket. Usually you might be able to have a ticket for the ground floor, a ticket for the balcony, or a ticket for a VIP or backstage pass, or maybe a meet and greet with your favorite artist. And then you can go out for ice cream afterwards. And then you can chat and have inside jokes. And all of a sudden the next album that they write is about you. The ticket to get into the doors is authentication and what actually you can do with that ticket or where you can go or who you can see is authorization. So within the context of a Laravel app, what are you allowing your users to actually see, go or do? In this case, are they able to go into your admin panel? Are they able to make that request? Are they able to send an email? Authorization gives you the ability to tell your users, hey, you can do that and you can't do that. Now within a Laravel application, there's two forms of authorization. There's gates and then there's policies. You can think of gates as kind of one-time authorization actions. And usually they aren't linked or connected to a model or a resource where policies are gonna be more tightly integrated with models or resources and usually generally consist of a lot more actions. In any Laravel application, you probably have a healthy mix of both gates where you're saying, hey, can a user access a admin dashboard? Where policies would be, can this user have access to edit this post? So starting off with gates, they can be defined in the app service provider boot function. The first parameters is going to be the name of the gate that you want to define. And then the second is a callback function. In this case, something that returns true. So alert users is possible if that user is an admin in the database. Then in the rest of my application, I can say if the user is an admin and they can alert users, then we can move forward with that function. For example, in the controller, you can call can this user who is making this request actually alert users. So this is another permission on top of maybe having an is admin function or a method in your user model. Not only is that user an admin, can that user also alert users? Additionally, within a blade directive, you have the at can directive to alert users. If this user who is authenticated in your application can alert users, the authorization piece, let's show additional functionality. Additionally, you also have the ability to use the can method and middleware too. So can this user alert users? Well, then they can access this route. Additionally, inertia allows you to have this ability to pass props to your inertia view, your react view or your view view or your svelte view. And in this case, you can pass the can prop. We're saying, hey, can you alert users? And we're just going to pass in that can method. So the auth user can alert users. And if they can, then it's going to be passed in as a true variable so that you can use that within your react or view or svelte component. So while there are additional ways to check if a gate is permissible, in this case, if the authenticated user is allowed to do certain things like alert user, there are a bunch of different ways to check if that is true, if that is the case for that authenticated user. But there are also additional ways to create gates. For example, you can think of them as permissions, one-off permissions that usually aren't associated directly with multiple models or even a given model. In this case, if we wanted to say, hey, can a user delete a comment? Well, maybe not all users can delete comments and you want to pass in specific parameters of when a user can. In this case, if I was to pass in the user model as well as the comment model, 
I can check, is this comment related to a post that the user owns? And if that case, then yes, this user can delete comments on their post. So again, gates are really permissions in a sense. They're one-off checks that you want to enact in your application to see if a user can or cannot do something. But how can we take this one step further? Well, let's take a look at model policies. So in order to create a policy, you can use the PHP artisan command for that. So PHP artisan make policy and we're going to call this the post policy and then you can pass in an optional parameter of this specific model so we're going to say model equals post there we go now this adds that policy into the policies folder in our application app folder so post policy let's take a look now this generates a specific file, a policy that has comments detailing what these default methods do. So you have view any, you have view, you have create, update, delete, restore, and force delete. And these are policies that are default within that original policy creation. So very similar to gates in each of these methods that are already outlined for us, you define the true and false return. For example, in create, we can say that this returns true always. And this would be the sense that anyone can create something within our application. In this case, specifically to post, because this is our post policy. So within our authorization piece of our application, any post using the post model, a user can create. But maybe that's not the case. Maybe you only want to return true if the user is an admin in the database. In this case, maybe only admins can create a post. Now, policies are checked in a very similar way to how gates are. So in this case, if we wanted to store, in this case, we're in our post controller, if we want to create a store method in this controller and only make sure that people who are authorized to create posts can run this method, we would do something like this. Now, again, you can use this PHP method, this helper function anywhere in your application. This is essentially the same check that you're doing within a gate. The policy is just an easier way to group all of those methods. For example, in our post policy, it just gives us those methods out of the gate for create, for update, for delete. If we're linking those to a particular model, in this case of posts, this just groups that all in an easier way instead of having to um, clutter up our app service provider with multiple gates that we're defining. For example, that authorized method can be called in something like a Livewire class component. After all, it is just PHP. So you have the option of saying, hey, um, is this authenticated user allowed or authorized to alert users? And in this case, it's going to continue the function. If not, it's just going to be aborted right there. So authorization allows you to give your users the ability to do the things that they need to do within an application, or maybe the things that they can't do within an application. Overall, you have the choice to be able to tell your users within these Laravel confines of, do you have the ability to do that? And if you don't, let's stop that from happening. Are you sitting in the backstage pass with a VIP all access pass, or are you just sitting on the ground floor waiting for the show to start?